Okay, so before we get started, I'm just going to show you what my basic plein air kit is. I have a brush roll right here with some bristle brushes and a couple of softer brushes. I also have a viewfinder, two different types right here. I have my sketchbook, which is very important to sketch out your ideas when you're out in the field with markers. We're going to use a photograph today because the sun has been in and out and not really cooperating. For a substrate, I use just pieces of linen that I tape to board. That way I don't have to waste any of my pre-made boards. This is a Richardson one in a nice gray. I also have linen panels pre-made. These are Centurion that I usually tone. And I also use just pieces of etching paper that I gesso. So, and these are very lightweight, inexpensive, kind of nice to, to work on. A lot of artists these days are using this. This is called ACM. It's aluminum composite material. You can cut it with a, a boxer knife and gesso it. Um, what else do we have here? You need gloves if you wear them. I, I tend to use lead white sometimes, but... I use my gloves when that. A mixing palette knife. And I tend to use a very limited palette when I go out in the field because I don't want to have to carry all these colors with me. So my basic palette is always a white. Like I said, I, I do use a lot of lead white, but this is a titanium. This is Rembrandt's Permanent Red Light. This is a much cheaper alternative to cadmium red. Transparent Red Oxide I use for the underpaintings and also to to gray down my colors. You can also use burnt sienna. This is just a basic cad yellow light. Uh, cad medium would be a little bit more orange. And then the ultramarine blue, which is a real general blue. In the summer, you're probably gonna want a green. This one is sap green, which is a little bit warmer than Viridian, but you might want in the summer if you're doing a lot of painting outside to get some green. And then you also need your solvent. Now I have developed a, an allergy to solvent, the terpenoid. So I only use that outside in a lot of ventilation in a, in a cup. And you need something that can keep the lid on it. You shouldn't be breathing in any kind of solvent. This is a solvent free. It's called Chelsea Lavender Spike Oil. You can use this instead of terpenoid, but it also has a very strong smell. And the other things in my kit are tape clamps, like I said, gloves, and pay lots of paper towels, and you need a bag when you're out in the field. And this is my general paint bag. And I also have a lot of different painting setups. Here's just a few of them. But today we're going to be using my open box M, which I'll show you in a second. So here's the photograph. And you can see that I've decided on a square format. I like a lot of square formats for landscapes. Um, I'm going to start off with my darkest values, which is obviously the tree. Second darkest value is going to be the, the background. Third, second lightest value is going to be the grass. And our lightest value will be the sky. This corresponds to Carlson's theory of angles. If anybody you guys know, that's uh, Carlson's landscape work. I had recorded this and uh, it looks like it went off in the middle of it. So I will just tell you what I did here. I used transparent red oxide to mark my four basic values and value shapes. So that was the darkest one. The back is the second darkest. I added a little bit of ultramarine in here so that I could differentiate between the two of them. Then I used a little bit of transparent red oxide, just a touch of cad yellow to indicate the foreground and leaving the lightest areas light. While that was setting up, I didn't use any other medium, just a little bit of the lavender spike oil which is why if you hear me kind of breathing hard, it's because of that. It really does affect my lungs, unfortunately. <laughs> so I I went ahead and mixed up some of my secondary colors with uh, ultramarine blue and cad yellow to get this dark green. I desaturated it with the transparent red oxide. And then I made two lighter values of that. You have to be very careful. And when you're lighting stuff with, with white, it will completely kill the saturation. So not only will it make it cooler, it will make it duller and grayer, which is good, but it's, as long as that's what you're looking for. So I will make a little bit of an orange here because I'm going to want some of that. And 
I'll show you what happens when you add white. So you see it, it really cools it down. So anytime that you add white, you have to remember to go back in and add a little bit of your original colors just to bring that saturation back up. All right, still using my bristle brushes. I'm going to start working from dark to light. Let's see, is this going to be very saturated or not? It's good for the inside. Trying not to lift up the paint that's already there. I find that the easiest way to look at plein air painting is as studies. The whole thing should be to get the color notes down, get the composition down, and then go back to your studio and make a big painting out of it. <laughs> I'm just make it a little bit darker. The nice thing about having a limited palette is that it really, it forces you to mix, it forces you to think about color temperature. So this is the inside of this is very cool. As you can see where the sun is, is gonna be a lot brighter. Probably not even that bright. I'm gonna have to a little bit but I want some of that red to come through so don't don't cover it up all the way unless that's what you want I'm just going to work on getting everything put down and then we'll go into refining it so here's the little tree I added on the side it's not in the photograph you don't have to be a slave to your photograph or even to the scene in front of you just do what you think works for the painting. I, if you can see, I always make sure to wipe off my brush. Since I'm still working with darks, I'm going to keep using the same brush. This may be a little too light. No, it's looking all right. Let's go through the background. Maybe not want it a little bit bluer. there. Like I said, I'm just going to get everything down first and then we'll go into refining everything. Okay. This house is kind of dark, so maybe I should go ahead and just kind of put something in there. But I don't want it to really detract from the tree, so I'll just make something real simple here. Okay. All right, well, let's look at the tree trunks. The red, transparent red oxide and ultramarine make a very nice gray. They make a nice dark. And then if you add a little bit of white to them, they'll make a very nice gray. So I'm just indicating. I'm not getting very specific. I really don't want to get into too much detail here. Actually, going to switch brushes because you can use your brush if you're using different color as long as your values are close. It's when you mix a real light brush with a dark that you you kind of mess up your palette and mess up your colors. So I'm going to go in with this green, but it's going to be lighter than that. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow here.
again, and I want that underpainting to show through a little bit. See, I really love that kind of, they call that refraction, where it's kind of reverberating a little bit. So it's a little bit darker here. It's going to get lighter as we go back in space. I think you guys know that, right? Everything gets cooler and grayer. And it's one of the ways that you can create depth in a painting. So even though this is, uh, is going to have a lot of warm temperature on top of it, I'm still going to cool it down because I want to create that perception of going back in space. So I'm going to use that, that really light one I got there. Okay, so you see the color temperature there? From the same two colors, you can get a warm and a cool, a darker and a light. It's all, that's the beauty of mixing using a limited palette and really focusing on learning how to mix your colors. It's the most important thing you can do next to drawing every day. Okay, things also get narrower, like paths as they converge towards a distant point, your horizon point, they will start to come together. It's another way to create depth in a painting. I'm gonna take that and make it just a little bit lighter. I probably want, I'm gonna want that lighter in the end, but. placeholder for now. Okay. And see for our road, I was talking about that blue and ultramarine or the transparent red oxide. I'll show you how what a nice gray it makes. And you can make that gray be either cool or warm, depending on how much of each component it has in it. Let's see, that's probably too dark. No, oh, that's probably good for the sides, right? A little bit darker on the sides. And now maybe I'll space we see make it warm in the front just a touch yeah that's good okay So like I said, I'm just getting everything down. This white building is about the same value as that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same mixture. I might change it later. Let's paint it now. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. And maybe I will use a clean brush to put this first layer of the sky in. Light colors get very muddy very quickly. Let's see. I'm going to put it in real light. Maybe a little touch on that. I'm going to just lightly scumble it because I'm not sure. I'll go back in with some 
more definitive strokes as soon as I get that in. So you gotta be careful about your edges here. You'll see how easily it gets dirty. Okay, I've switched to softer brushes here. These are a couple of different ones. These are Rosemary uh, Shiraz. That's a synthetic. This is a natural hair soft brush from Rosemary, and this is a sable. And that's among the softest of the brushes you can get. So now that I have a layer of everything, I'm going to go in and just start building on top of what I've got there. So I'm going to start off with the, just because it's closest to me, I'm going to start off with the grasses. Just going to lay them, lay down. I probably won't be talking too much for the next few minutes, so. I want to try to create some texture there. So I think that instead of orange, I think that I might make that kind of cooler. So maybe with that purple, so that it will pick up the bit of that background purple. Again, if you add white, you got to remember to, oops, I just got white in my hand. That's kind of muddy, isn't it? Let's see if we can make it a little clearer, shall we say. fine line. Keep building up. It's definitely darker in the front, so it's going to go back on the right side a little.
I smush everything together. You can add a little darks in between the lights, and you're kind of suggesting texture there without having to go in and paint every little leaf. to really try to not pick up what we got there. I like kind of a little of the orange and the purple together. to keep your brush clean when you're doing this kind because uh, you just end up making everything gray. I want this to be the same value as that, which is why I'm mixing it next to it. Again, Too light. I'm just adjusting just a little bit. Playing with your edges there. green in there. It's not completely violet in the background. sculpting the tree here. Sky holes are what really make 
trees take shape. But you've got to be very careful with your edges. painting session doing the edges. Not too much more there. That's all right. I had a teacher who told me painting is just a series of corrections. Actually, Doug Dawson, who will be coming to Saratoga in the fall to teach a pastel workshop. The landscape, well, actually, he teaches in both pastel and oil. Uh, and he is an incredible teacher. So let's see. It's good to try to work everything at one time. Don't finish one area completely. I mean, that's a different. Everybody's got a different way of working, but I find it easier to, to judge your values and everything if, you've, if you're kind of working the whole thing at one time. I'm going to make that a little bit wider so that I can go in and sculpt it. All right, so it's a little bit grayer, which I like. I'm going to take my big brush. Forget to bring plastic bags for your paper towels. And wipe it off. And I want to get some of that warm green in there. Oops. Warm green. A little too much white. Get some really green. Mostly red. I want it more chromatic, not really grayer. Let's see. I don't think it needs to be that light. You can make a change that makes it look like you're changing the value, but you can do it with temperature instead. So something warm on top of something cool will make it look like it's changing value, but it really isn't. So I'm going to go back in and try to reemphasize that. So you see that's a very cool green with more blue. You can create more depth just by changing the temperature. I'm going to add a little bit of the transparent red accented. Make it a little bit less saturated. getting to our edges. I'm going to go back to the warm part. A little bit of purple in there. Some of that green. The 
because that's brown. So, <laughs> clean brush. If you were out in the field, really you'd just be wanting to get this, those two color choices down is what you'd want to try to get. So let me finish that back now that I have that brown. Let's see. See here I'm wheezing with the uh, Lavender saw it really. I try not to use it too much. It's really not healthy for you. I used to do so much plein air painting that it didn't really affect me because I was always outside. But since I've been in my studio for the past couple of years, uh, it really has started to affect me. I know a lot of other painters who painted for a long time have the same reaction. So I'm just going to restate that dark tree there. Try to keep it a little bit warmer so it comes forward. on the sky a little bit further. I'll use my soft brush. Gosh, I'm going to just take a little break here. So I'm going to work on the sky a little bit. The skies are really never that blue. And I actually never really do paint blue skies. I tend to prefer uh, sunset very early morning. But uh, just for the sake of expediency, I to make this a blue one. Like I said, it really is never that blue. So you want to kind of gray it down a little bit. Now what makes trees look like trees are sky holes and edges, right? You want to make sure that you have a soft edge. And you just have to keep working it. It's just a Now, when you do actual sky holes, they should be darker than the sky because it's the whole principle is like looking through a screen. So I'm going to make a slightly darker version of that. Looks like there's a big sky hole right about here. And there's some. don't want to overdo it on sky holes because that's a surefire way to kind of break up your masses. Remember, this is going to be probably your strongest mass, right? Your darkest. Yeah, see, I don't like that. So I'll go back in and change that. That may be the outside of it. Edge. When you do that, then you make it darker. Let's see how that works. Let's see. You can do this with a bristle brush. I just find a, a, a softer brush helps. It's a little bit easier to control. Forget 
forget to wipe off your brush a lot. See if I can get some green in there. too carried away with this. If I was doing a bigger painting, I would have spent a lot of time on this part. Because that's what really makes the shape so interesting, right? And if I was doing a studio version of this, I would scumble that sky. Now what I'm going to do here Now, whenever you have a light area, particularly on a sunny day, facing the sky, some of that color is going to be in that light area, see, like here. So this should be a little bit cooler. And what I can do is just bring a little bit more blue into it, maybe. shadows there. Looks like it's a little dark. I don't want it to look like water in there. So I'm going to do this. Bring the reds. There's no green. This is just a real straightforward, like if I was out on a, if I was out painting this, I would just want to get the colors. And in my notebooks, I keep, I, I would call it collecting shapes. I like to just look at shapes of trees. So I have whole pages of just outlines of trees, kind of. And then I could go back to the studio and I can make whatever kind of painting I want. I could make this a sunset. I could make it morning. You just have to know where your sun is coming from, right? So now that I've done that, now that I've corrected that color there, this is looking a little too dark, isn't it? So that's why I said it's all, it's all a correction. Everything is a correction. So let me bring that in there, maybe a little bit more of that. I am missing here is that there should be some sky holes going through there. So not just the sky, but where you're seeing the trees behind. So I'm going to try to mix up some purple here. Make it a little bit lighter. And then maybe go in and emphasize So you really don't want to go overboard with sky holes because then they're just going to look kind of funny. It breaks up, it breaks up the mass, like I said before. And then it, it, it 
starts to look a little contrived instead of looking natural. The whole key is to suggest not to, not to really overdo it. I've just gone back over some of that area that I put in there initially, making it a little bit cleaner color. It's a little bit too grayed down. Again, like I said, if you're just doing this for a one or two hour plein air, don't get bogged down in the details. Is this when I get the idea of it? Get out. That's better. It's just all layering. Didn't like this, but I like this brush because it's small, so I am going to wipe it off as well as I can and go back in with a little bit of a darker color. Just to emphasize those sky holes. I'm not going to get too fussy here. But again, I like this brush. Well, actually, I'm gonna, these rosemary brushes are quite nice. They used to be made from uh, mongoose hair. And then uh, they had a big stash of it for years so that they weren't killing any new animals. So these are all old, old stock. So these are the old brushes, but their new brushes are. Um, synthetic. Too light, too gray, too light. Just want to absolutely put that a little bit brighter still. darker to hold it to the front of the ink better. And I think if I was out in the field, I would probably be calling an end to this right now. Really, when you start getting into just adding detail for the sake of adding detail, you know, you're done. This is what I'm doing here. So I think what I would normally do is I would wait till this is dry to put in those, to put in the telephone poles so that it looks like it's going back. But I think I captured the idea of it for, for the day. So I look forward to seeing you guys when we have our Zoom conference.